Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and out on the blog Eileen asked me to do a short video on how I painted the unicorn. Uh, she pointed out that it's really hard to paint an all-white creature and actually have it turn out okay, Because and, and she is totally right. Um, in fact, painting any animal sculpture all one color is it's almost impossible to make it look interesting. It might look the right color, but it's really hard to get it interesting. I did uh, this the same technique on both of these guys because I wanted them to fit together. I actually used the same colors, although I use a couple more darker browns for the rabbit, but other than that it's the same palette. And I bought my paint at Walmart. It's the um, Waverly chalk paint. It comes in little bottles. Um, I've never done that before either. Um, I just happened to be walking by them in, the, in their hobby department and I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. I want to try that. I just now went out to Amazon.com and found out that you can get the folk art brand of the chalk paint and the little 8 ounce jars. So I'll probably be ordering some of theirs in more colors. Um, Walmart is about 30 miles away from me so it's a lot easier for me to order them online. I'll put a link to them down below. Now the first thing I did was I used some ivory along with the two other colors. Uh, Waverly calls them hazelnut and ink. I would call them raw sienna and black. And those were mixed in very, very tiny amounts into the ivory in order to make it a very light, warm gray. The first coat is the only coat that completely covers all of the epoxy sculpt and I used an old chip brush pouncing it. I didn't want it to have any brush marks on him at all. So it was all pounced the same way that I did the rest of it, but the other coats were done using a stencil brush. So once that dries, I just put him in front of a fan and dried that. And then the second and third coats were both slight variations of that same um, combination of three colors. The second coat was slightly darker, just a teensy bit more of the ink added to it. The, the variations are so slight it's almost impossible to see them on the camera. And then the third one was almost pure ivory, but just enough of the ink and the hazelnut added to it to uh, warm it up just a little bit and make sure that it would uh, fit in with the other coats. The last coat was also put on over the stripes down at the bottom. Those stripes came from the, uh, the Somali wild ass that I was using for my model. I wanted them to be kind of like those. Um, sometimes you'll see a pure Siamese cat that has very, very faint uh, tiger stripes in, in the darker colors on his points. And that's kind of what I wanted. That, that's, that's sort of the feel that I wanted with those stripes on the bottom of his legs. The horn and the mane and the tail and the front of his muzzle and his eyelids, those are done with the ink color mixed with a little bit of the hazelnut to warm it up. And then I added a little bit of golden acrylic glazing liquid to it so that it would be slightly transparent. You could also do the same thing just with a, a dry brush. If you don't have the golden acrylic glazing liquid, it won't look exactly the same, but it would, it would work just fine. That would actually be a little bit easier probably on the muzzle. And then I just added the, the white strokes on the mane in order to tie it in and look a little bit more like the Somali wild ass's mane. And then I used, uh, just to make his uh, mane and tail look silvery, I used the white mist from the mini metallic finger metallics. <laughs> it's these, um, little things that I've had uh, f probably for 20 years. Uh, I hardly ever have an excuse for using them. <laughs> I just wanted to this time. Uh, I put a little bit of the white mist over the uh, dark gray and on the horn and mane and tail and over his hooves too. Just a, just a teensy bit and also just the slightest hint on the upper eyelid. So Eileen, thank you for asking. <laughs> That's how I painted this fellow. Um, it was really, really easy. And yet, it, it I think it was really effective. Painting something all white really is almost impossible to do and make it interesting, like I said. And I, I think this is not only interesting, but it almost looks natural because there's that color va variation. Because of the, the way the color was dabbed on with the stencil brush, 
it wasn't really controlled entirely. As a matter of fact, because the paint dries a little bit darker than it is when it goes on, you can't really see exactly what you're doing when you're putting it on there. And I like that um, accidental look. Now, like I said, I, I did use the same technique, that little pouncing thing, uh, with a stencil brush for the rabbit. And the reason I wanted to do that was because the, the agouti, I probably am not pronouncing that right, but a wild rabbit, has different colors all the way along the length of his hairs, every single one of them. And so that's almost impossible to reproduce on something this small without getting out magnifying glasses and like really, really tiny brushes. But I wanted the variation in the coat, even on the rabbit. And I was able to do that by making three or four different coats, each coat slightly different color, and using the stencil brush and pouncing it over so that no coat was completely covered with the next color. I think you can probably see it just a little bit more clearly on the rabbit because the differences in colors were a little bit more pronounced than they were on the all-white unicorn. The unicorn, by the way, doesn't have any actual white on him, <laughs> but he does look white. I do intend to use this method a lot in the future because I really like the way it came out. I like the color variation and I like how rich it makes it look. Um, it was really easy. It went, it went on really, really fast and yet it just looks... Um, rich. I don't know. I don't know how to explain that exactly. There's a depth to it that you just can't get if you paint something all one color. That's all I have for you today. <laughs> Come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com.